Today's lesson is called Dr. Heidegger's Experiment, Day 2. Hi everyone, my name is Jeff. I'm Roger. Again, we're talking about our featured story, Dr. Heidegger's Experiment. This is a story that was written by Nathaniel Hawthorne, an American author. It's a short story about an experiment that a so-called Dr. Heidegger conducted on four of his friends. He had his friends come to his study, and then he showed them this dry rose. He put it in a vase, then the rose returned to its former glory. And, of course, his four friends are probably going, Wow, that's astonishing. How did you do that? Let us in on your secret. There you go. Dr. Heidegger apparently has discovered the fountain of youth, and he's just shown all his friends how this water, this special water from the Fountain of Youth, works on roses. Remember, you got a dried out rose there. It's been shriveled. It's dead and old. It looks terrible. But if you put that rose in this water, it comes back to life and it looks young and beautiful again. And he wants to try to see if this water will do the same thing for his old friends, his old friends who used to be prosperous and successful, but who have in their old age kind of fallen on hard times. So let the experiment begin. Let's go ahead and see what happens when these friends, these people are exposed to water from the fountain of youth. Let's go ahead and do so by reading or starting to read from day two of Dr. Heidegger's experiment. Let's get going. While Dr. Heidegger freely offers the water, he urges his friends to be wise and not make the same mistakes that had led to their current ruin. Before you drink, you should draw up a few general rules for your guidance. He adds that they should use their past experiences to educate others. 例如, both candidates urge citizens to vote in the upcoming election. 这两位候选人都呼吁选民在接下来的选举中投票. Okay, so evidently, Dr. Heidegger has found the fountain of youth, a special kind of spring that has water that can let you live forever. You won't have to ever get sick again. And everybody, of course, is looking for the fountain of youth. I believe some uh, Spanish explorers or something went to Florida because they thought they could find the Fountain of Youth there. You're from Florida. You you're probably know a little about that. You're talking about Ponce de Leon. One Ponce de Leon. He was a Spanish conquistador who set foot on the American mainland there in Florida. And rumor has it, or legend has it, I should say, that he was looking for the Fountain of Youth, though there is no historical evidence for that. And, of course, there is no such thing as the Fountain of Youth, although wouldn't it be nice if there were a Fountain of Youth? But, hey, these friends are astonished. They go, wow, you've got water there from the Fountain of Youth. We'd like to have some of that. So while Dr. Heidegger freely offers the water, he urges his friends to be wise and not make the same mistakes that had led to their current ruin. So he freely offers them the water. Hey, you're my friends. Of course, I'll share some of this water with you, but he says, maybe I have a condition here, I urge you to be wise and don't make the same mistakes you did in the past. So if you urge someone to do something, that means you recommend that they do this. There you go. You recommend that or you strongly recommend that. You could say something like, hey, I really urge you to do this. You really have no other choice, so you have to do this. I'm urging you to do that. Please do that. Now, sometimes you might urge someone to do something while you're trying to convince them of something, but that's not always the case here. Dr. Heidegger is urging his friends. He's warning them or strongly recommending them something, i.e., he's telling them, to be wise and to not make the same mistakes, okay? He's going to give them youth once again, and he's hoping that they don't mess up their youth once again as they get old once again. Anyways, next, Heidegger. Dr. Heidegger speaks. He says, before you drink, 
you should draw up a few general rules for your guidance. Right, draw up a few rules. Usually, when we use the phrase "draw up," that means you need to think of some ideas and maybe write them on paper or something like that, just to give you some idea about what you're going to do in the future. So, before you drink this water from the fountain of youth, you should think of some general rules. Think about what you're going to do in the future when you are able to be young forever, and how you're going to conduct yourself in the future. So that you do not return to your current state of ruin, you have totally destroyed your lives because of your past problems. I don't want you to repeat those same mistakes. So yes, so come up with some regular rules, general rules. So again, you don't make those mistakes again. And he adds, or he also says that they should use their past experiences to educate others. So yes, because you suffered in the past, you made a bad business deal, or you are a politician with a bad reputation, or people have destroyed your life because of gossip. Well, that actually is some experience. Okay, it's bad, of course. It made your life hell, but、uh, it's a good experience that you can. Pass on to others so that they don't make the same mistakes that you did. So don't mess up your youth again, and also educate others so they don't make the same mistakes as you have. Anyways, folks, with that, it's time for us to take a break. But don't go away. When we come back, we'll keep reading from Doctor Heidegger's experiment. Without acknowledging the doctor's advice, the friends begin to drink. The more they consume, the younger they become, and they rejoice as they regain their strength and beauty. Catching sight of the gorgeous widow Witcherly, the three men also remember why they had fallen in love with her many years ago. They begin fighting for her attention, and in the commotion, they knock over the table. The vase smashes into pieces, and the water spreads across the floor. 第二部分我们看到的单字是 acknowledge， 这个字当做动词，它有理会或是承认的意思。所以我们可以说 Jessica acknowledged the driver honking the horn in her back, so she moved to the side. Jessica 注意到后方的喇叭声，所以她移动到旁边。再来，我们看到的单字是 consume， 这个字当做动词，代表吃、喝或是消耗的意思。例如。Jack loved going to buffets as he could consume huge quantities of food. Jack 爱去自助餐厅，因为他可以吃大量的食物。在这个字的字尾加上 r， 就会变成 consumer， 意思是消费者或是顾客。那我们就可以说 consumers want good quality at a low price。消费者想以低价购买到品质好的商品。下一个我们看到的单字是 rejoice。这个字当做动词，它有非常高兴、感到欣喜的意思。例如 ，Walter 在考试上得到高分时，他非常开心。英文可以这么说 ：Walter rejoiced when he received a perfect score on the test。接下来我们看到的单字是 gorgeous， 这个字当做形容词，代表极其漂亮的、美丽动人的意思。所以我们可以说 ：The hikers were treated to a gorgeous sunset。登山客得以欣赏绚丽的夕阳。再来，我们看到的单字是 smash， 这个字当做动词，代表摔破、打碎或是猛力撞击的意思。例如 ，The clay pot smashed when I dropped it on the floor。这个陶罐被我摔到地上后就粉碎了。此外，这个字还可以当形容词，有极为成功的意思。我们常用 smash hit 来指极受欢迎的事物，像是 The company's new product lineup was a smash hit with consumers。该公司的新产品线大受消费者欢迎。Okay, let's continue talking about our story today. Now, the friends, of course, have been told by Dr. Heidegger. To try not to repeat the same mistakes that they made in the past. Okay, they should draw up some general rules for their future conduct. But hey, if I were one of those friends, I would just be too excited. Hey, look, there's water from the fountain of youth. We don't have to fear death and disease anymore. I don't care what he says. I want some of that water right now. So, without acknowledging the doctor's advice, the friends begin. 
taken to drink, so they don't acknowledge his advice. Acknowledge another way to say that is recognize. They ignore his advice. They don't acknowledge it. They don't recognize what he said. They just want to drink that water. There you go. Usually, when you acknowledge someone or something, you kind of give that person or thing their due recognition, or you give them respect or something like that. But that's not the case here. Here, if you acknowledge someone's remarks, you try to think about them, you take them in, consider them seriously, and you try to understand what they're trying to say. Okay, you're trying to get the meaning of what they say, and you're making it clear that you're paying attention to that meaning. But here, these friends. They're not doing this. They're not paying attention to the doctor, and the doctor's plans make total sense. He's saying, "Don't make the same mistakes as you did before. Draw up a plan and also help others." Okay, and he wants them to pay attention to this and to consider this and to acknowledge this, but they do exactly the opposite. They ignore the doctor. Yes, without acknowledging the doctor's advice, the friends begin to drink, and the more they consume, the younger. They become so. The fountain of youth is working, and get this: they get young again, and they rejoice as they regain their strength and beauty. How about that? That being said, I feel a disaster coming on. This is good for now for these people, but this is not going to be good for anyone in the end. I can feel it. Anyways, before we move on, we've got two really easy words to talk about: the words consume and rejoice. They're both verbs, and here to consume something is to drink it. They're drinking the water from the fountain of youth. Otherwise, though, to consume something like this is to drink that thing, to eat that thing, or to somehow ingest that thing. You put it. In your body, usually by way of your mouth. Anyways, they also rejoice. Okay, if you rejoice, you become super happy. You're happy. You're delighted. You're joyful. You're feeling great. Yeah, the first time I went to the Sherlin Night Market, I consumed three oyster omelets. They were so so tasty. And afterwards, I guess I could say I rejoiced with my friends. Weren't those oyster omelets tasty? Weren't they delicious? We should rejoice. But here they consumed the water from the fountain of youth, and of course they celebrated. They rejoiced because they became young again. Who wouldn't be happy? If that could happen to you, you could get rid of all those wrinkles, get rid of that extra spare tire you have around your midsection. Who wouldn't want that? So of course they rejoiced as they became strong and beautiful again. Now here in the next sentence it says, catching sight of the gorgeous widow Wycherley, the three men also remember why they had fallen in love with her many years ago. So of course they were celebrating, but then they were looking. At the widow Witcherly, and suddenly her hair was not gray anymore. She no longer had those wrinkles around her eyes. She was a stunning beauty, like she was in the past. The men looked her over and they got, "Whoa! Now I remember why I had such a crush on her." Yeah, you've got pretty, then you've got beautiful, and then you've got gorgeous. Okay, and above that, you could probably say that someone is. Simply radiant or anything like that, but gorgeous. That's just a way of saying that someone is beautiful, and you're being very strong while saying this. Yes, if someone is gorgeous, this person is unbelievably, stunningly beautiful. They're astonishingly beautiful, you could say. Further, to catch sight of something is to see that thing. You kind of see that thing briefly. You get a look of that thing, or you catch a glimpse of that thing. Anyways, the three dudes here—they see the beautiful widow Witcherly. She's gorgeous once again, and because of that, they begin fighting for her attention. They start to make the same mistakes as they once did there in the past. Yes, they begin fighting for her attention, and in the commotion, they knock over the table. And remember, the vase is on the table, and the vase has the water—the special water in it. So. This is not a good thing. Anyways, before we move on, let's talk about the word commotion. A commotion is a rumpus or a ruckus 
very simply a commotion. It's just a situation where there's a whole lot of confusion. A commotion is kind of like a loud disturbance where people might be fighting or jostling. They might be confused or they might be angry or they might be noisy or something like that. So while these guys are fighting, they cause a commotion. It becomes noisy, so on and so forth. Confusion reigns and yes, they knock over the table. Yes, because of confusion, or maybe because of a conflict, you might see people maybe fighting and a big crowd gathered around them. You might say, "Hey, what's the commotion? What's going on here?" So, of course, they're fighting for her attention. Maybe they're trying to flex their muscles to show what great bodies they have, or they're trying to brag about all the money they have and how they can make her happy and stuff like that. And basically, it's a big commotion, and as a result, they knock. Over the table, the vase smashes into pieces, and of course, the water spreads across the floor. The water spills across the floor. My goodness, what have they done? Now, in this sentence, we've got the word "smash," which basically means something breaks into lots of pieces because of a violent force. Something was moving really fast. You could say a car smashed into the tree because the driver was going way over the speed limit. All right, folks. With that, it's time for us to take a short break. But when we come back, we're wrapping up our lesson. Disappointed at his friend's behavior, Doctor Heidegger says he is glad for the loss of the water. If the fountain gushed at my very doorstep, I would not stoop to bathe my lips in it. Such is the lesson ye have taught me. Meanwhile, the friends who are now old again swear to find the fountain of youth and drink from it day and night. 第三部分，我们看到的单字是 doorstep。这个字当做名词，它有门前的台阶的意思。例如 ，Eric 忘了带钥匙，所以他坐在门前的台阶上等他弟弟回家。英文可以这么说 ：Eric forgot his key, so he sat on the doorstep and waited for his brother to come home. 今天最后一个单字，我们看到的是 stoop。这个字当做动词，它有弯腰、俯身的意思。所以我们可以说。Tony's shoelace is untied, so he stoops down to tighten it. Tony 的鞋带松了，所以他弯下腰绑鞋带。Okay, let's move on now to the third part of our lesson. It looks like they had a little bit of a disaster there. They just became so smitten. By the widow Witcherly, they wanted to get her attention. They failed to pay attention to the vase on the table. They knocked into the table, and the vase smashed onto the floor, broke into a thousand pieces, and the water from the fountain of youth spilled onto the floor. So here, disappointed at his friend's behavior, Doctor Heidegger says he is glad for the loss of the water. So he was kind of expecting his friends to behave. Better and maybe draw up a few general rules for their future guidance. They didn't do that. They got too excited about the water and about the hot widow Witcherly, and so of course they could not concentrate. They could not be logical here. So of course he's disappointed. He expected more of them. Yeah, Doctor Heidegger is kind of down in the dumps and maybe even a bit angry too because his experiment is kind of a total failure. But he does learn something. He learns that the water from the fountain of youth might not be all that it's cracked up to be. He says, "If the fountain gushed at my very doorstep, I would not stoop to bathe my lips in it." Such is the lesson. Ye have taught me. Now we've got three things to talk about here. It says that the fountain gushed. If the fountain gushed at my doorstep, said Doctor Heidegger. Dot 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 dot. Now what does it mean for something to gush? Well, usually liquids gush. And yes, to gush for a liquid, that means that that liquid is flowing with some force or with great force. Okay. So if the fountain gushed at his doorstep, if it flowed there, if it came out of the ground there, he would still not. Use the stuff he wouldn't drink from that fountain of youth. Then we also have the word doorstep. A doorstep is a step. 
It's a step in front of your house. It's a step outside of your outside door there, your front door, which leads to the front door of your house. Exactly. So here I could say that water gushed in through the window when it broke during the typhoon. Lots of water came in rather quickly, but here, of course, if it、uh, if the water gushed at his doorstep, he would not stoop. To bathe his lips in it, he would not put his lips in it. Stoop here just means to bend over at your waist, usually straight down to stoop down. When you sweep the floor or when you mop the floor, you might stoop over a little bit to sort of take out some of the、uh, really dirty spots there. It might hurt your back, so please be careful. But he would not stoop down to touch his lips to that water. He would not try to drink that water. It's a lesson that ye have taught me, ye. Here, I guess, is just a rather formal and old word, which just means you. Okay, let's go ahead and wrap up our story. Meanwhile, the friends who are now old again, the fountain of youth, apparently, the effects wear off quite quickly. They swear to find the fountain of youth and drink from it day and night because they, unlike Dr. Heidegger. They have learned nothing. Anyways, it says that they want to drink from it. From they want to drink from it. I should say, day and night. That means they want to drink from it all the time without stopping. All right, folks. With that, our lesson is now through, and the Chinese teacher is on her way. Hello, 同学，大家好，我是 Hanny。我们来看今天的文法重点。故事里面啊，这位海德格医生向他四个朋友提供青春之泉的水，他也劝朋友要明智，但他的朋友们都不理会，就开始大喝了起来。读到课文第二部分有一个句子 ：The more they consume, the younger they become。他们喝的越多，就变得越年轻。那这边就来介绍一下双重比较级的用法。双重比较级的句型是。的加上比较级加主词加动词，逗号的比较级加主词加动词，表示越怎么样就越怎么样。那其中的比较级可以是形容词比较级，或者是副词比较级，或者是数量或量的比较级。好，那这个句子也可以简化成的比较级，逗号的比较级。例如 ，the sooner the better， 就表示越快越好。那我们再看两个例句。The spicier the food is, the better I like it. 食物越辣，我越喜欢。The more cream you add to the soup, the thicker it will be. 你在汤里面加越多的鲜奶油，这个汤就会越浓稠。好，读到课文的下一句。Catching sight of the gorgeous widow Witcherly, the three men also remember why they had fallen in love with her. Many years ago, 这三个男人看见美艳动人这个寡妇 Witcherly， 他们就想起多年前爱上她的原因。好，那那句子里面的 Why they had fallen in love with her many years ago， 这是由 Why 引导名词短句来当做动词 Remember 的受词。那其他 W H 疑问词像是 What。Who, when, where, how 等等，也都可以用来引导名词短句。那它的基本结构就是 W H 疑问词加主词加动词。那这部分在句子里面，它可以当主词、受词或者是主词补语来用。例如 ，Do you know how the accident happened？ 你知道那场意外事故是怎么发生的吗？那句子里面的名词短句 How the accident happened 就是来当做动词 know 的受词。好，那这边还有一个片语是 catch sight of 加上名词，它表示突然看见什么，瞥见什么。sight 在这边它是当不可数名词，表示景象。除了 catch sight of， 你也可以用 get a look at 加名词，或者是用 catch a glimpse of 加上名词来表达相同的语义。那其中这个 glimpse 它是可数名词，刚刚说 sight 是不可数 ，glimpse 是可数，它表示一瞥一眼。好，来看个例句 ：We caught sight of a pop singer in the restaurant. 我们在那间餐厅看见一位流行歌手。再看个例句 ：The fans waited for hours at the airport to catch a glimpse of the K-pop star. 粉丝们为了要看那位韩国明星，在机场等了好几个小时。好，那以上就是今天的重点整理。我们接下来回顾今天的单词吧。Urge. The students were urged to study for at least an hour every day. Acknowledge. Sarah didn't acknowledge the ringing phone until the call went to voicemail. Consume. 
My friends and I consumed six bags of chips at the party. Rejoice. The crowd rejoiced as their team scored and won last night. Gorgeous. That haircut really suits you. You look gorgeous. Smash. The mirror fell and smashed into pieces. Doorstep. I was excited to see that flowers had been left on my doorstep. Stoop. Adina stooped to pick up her puppy and carry him home. Discussion, Discussion starter starts, starts now! <laughs> All right, folks, it's time for our discussion starter. Roger, would you drink from the fountain of youth if given the opportunity? Why or why not? Yes, I would drink from the fountain of youth because it would make me live forever. And of course, I would do so only if I knew my family, my children, my wife, etc. were the only other people who were going to drink from it. I would not want to share it with anybody else or there might be big trouble. There might be a big commotion. How about you? No, I would not drink from the fountain of youth because it seems like drinking from the fountain of youth always leads to a calamity of sorts. I think this story showed that quite nicely when people, or the four people from our story, I should say, drank from the fountain of youth. They started making all of the same mistakes once again. So drinking from the fountain of youth, I wouldn't do it because it just never works out. It will never ever work out the way that you want it to. Okay, everyone, with that, Today's article is now complete, but as always, we sure hope that you guys have enjoyed reading along with us. Anyways, I'm Jeff. I am Roger. See you, See you next, next time. time.